Hello and welcome to a special edition of Mr Barton's Maths videos recorded in honour of Water Week. Now what I'm going to try and do in this short video is find an interesting way of looking at the vast differences between both a country's use of water and their access to water. And to do this I'm going to use one of my all-time favourite websites, Gapminder World. So if I just type in Gapminder into Google and it's going a bit slow but there it is and there's Gapminder World if I just give that a click and fingers crossed it's the first website there now Gapminder World takes a little while to load so here is one I prepared earlier and that is the home screen that you get now it's an absolutely fantastic website that allows you to compare lots of different variables for lots of different countries over lots of different time periods so what we've got here is income per person against life expectancy now I'm going to keep income per person on the x-axis, but on this y-axis what I'm going to put is municipal water withdrawal. Now what that is, it's the volume of water withdrawal per person per year used directly by the population, so not taken up by agriculture or industry or anything like that. And I'd like you to think, whilst I fire it up, what the relationship between income per person and the use of water by, directly by the population might be. So let's have a look here. Let's get environment up, let's get water up, and there it is, municipal water withdrawal. Now, there's not much data around for 2007, but there's a load of data around for 2000, as we'll see in a second. And because there's such vast differences, it's actually going to make sense for me to use a logarithmic scale for this. So here we go, drop the time back to 2000, and there we go. Now, that to me looks like a pretty strong positive correlation. Um, now, the size of the circles is representative of the population size of the country. So let's just take a look at some of these um, countries. Right at the top here, we've got the United States, um, about 40,000 income per capita in 2000, and 209 cubic units of water available. And then right down at the bottom, we've got Somalia, just 1.6 cubic units um, of water available and an average income of just 882. But it's not a perfect positive correlation because we do have some exceptions. For example, look over here, Armenia. That's got pretty much the same water usage by the population as the United States, but about a 20th of the income per person. If I just highlight here, that's all the Western European countries and Central Asia. And if I highlight there, that's all the North America and South America. And then here we've got all the African countries. And you can see pretty clearly that there does seem to be quite a strong relationship between income per person and water withdrawal available. Now, what I'd also like to look at is another relationship. And this time I'm going to look at agricultural water withdrawal. And that's the percentage of total withdrawal used in agriculture. And again, I'd like you to think, what's the relationship between that and income per person whilst I fire this up? So let's have a look over here. Let's go down to environment, let's go down to water, and let's go to agricultural water withdrawal. Once again, the data is a little bit sketchy for the late years, but for 2000 there, you can see quite, some, quite a lot of data. I've kept it a linear scale this time. And look at some of the vast, vast differences here. Um, if I go down here, let's have a look at Ireland. About $30,000 uh, per year, and just 1% of its water, total water withdrawal, is used for agriculture. Whereas if I compare that up here to somewhere like Afghanistan, that's 98% of all the water it has access to is used for agriculture. And look at its income per person. And what I'm going to do just to finish is just show you what happens as a country develops, how its water uses changes. And a really good example of this is actually Mauritius. So if I just highlight Mauritius, and if I take this right back to 1977, we've got Mauritius there, 77% of its water being used for agriculture. If I play this now, you'll see that as Mauritius gets richer, and moves to the right of the graph, the percentage of the water it uses for agriculture falls. And by 2007, it's down to 68%. Anyway, hope you found that fairly useful and fairly interesting. As I say, if you haven't used Gapminder World, get straight on it. It's absolutely classic. Hope that helped, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.